Dear uh, friends, <coughs> let's start uh, our meeting. Uh, we're speaking about the implementation of joint projects uh, in entrepreneurship and uh, uh, innovation in SEO and BRICS. Uh, the format uh, was in the third, um, third section of youth, uh, BRICS youth, and as a moderator, uh, who will be working, uh, communicating with you for uh, an hour and a half, I would like to um, see our agenda like this. I think that it would be better not to be just, uh, uh, to be more interactive. I mean, not to be just like a, uh, uh, this podium speakers and uh, on the one hand and uh, the audience on the other hand. Since we're speaking about joint projects, let's have an interactive a dialogue. I will be keeping these tips with me, uh, where I have all my uh, questions, questions that we can cover on the agenda, and I'll start uh, our job, our agenda, of, well, from you, from the audience. So, So we have the first first wonderful question. Let's start speaking on uh, problems. So, so what is hindering the uh, joint um, uh, entrepreneurship in uh, SEO and BRICS? We have uh, experts here who will share with you their own opinions, made pres make presentations. But, as you know, of course, uh, our, we, uh, the number of speakers, uh, our speakers is limited. Therefore, I want to address my questions to the audience. What impedes our development? Somewhere here we have a, an expert in uh, region, uh, re re region search. What uh, impedes us? Uh, uh, in our joint projects, in our entrepreneurships. Hello, I'm representing the Moscow region, which you know perfectly well. We are um, uh, around, located around Moscow. You know, I don't think that there is something which is impeding our uh, joint projects. We have three airports, a lot of uh, facilities, uh, institutions for development in terms of youth diplomacy, a lot of youth organizations. And it happens that in uh, uh, Russian um, regions, uh, w the joint entrepreneurship fails. The first impediment, of course, language uh, barrier or impediment. Sometimes we simply speak different languages. And of course, we say that with SCIS uh, countries, this problem is uh, less evident uh, because we speak Russian. The second problem is that we are located far from each other. And sometimes not only in uh, online or telephone contacts, uh, we can um, uh, address our problems. I am happy that, uh, for example, with the delegation from Kyrgyzstan, we are in constant contact. And if we have time, we can give them also uh, the floor to share their opinion. The third, third uh, barrier that we have is different norms and regulations. Uh, regulations in terms of economy, <laughs> I mean some legal norms uh, in terms of youth entrepreneurship. As for the fourth barrier, the most difficult, different mentalities. Uh, very often an idea which, is, uh, which works within one country cannot be simply adapted, borrowed by another country, and it's very difficult to implement one good business in, uh, on the territory of different countries. You have to adapt this business to the peculiarities uh, and features of uh, each country. And the fifth problem, uh, the main problem, well, um, not always we trust each other, and, and sometimes it's difficult to find um, 
partners that you can trust. But anyway, we are working with our problems. We are addressing our problems, and uh, we will cover them, of course, during our discussion. And this project of business incubators is a wonderful project. So we're not going to uh, show everything now, reveal all, all our successes and projects. But I'd like now to ask ask a question to somebody in the audience. So the question is, is the difference between uh, state regulation of entrepreneurship in our countries a real impediment for uh, entrepreneurships and how address these problems if they exist? Not speaking uh, many English. Uh, sorry, sorry. Have you have we uh, have we a Spanish translation? Yes. Ah, not have. Not, not have. have? Not okay. Okay. Professor Barrientos, okay. help us please to translate uh, Spanish. <laughs> translate the, the question. Hello, uh, in Portuguese or Spanish? Spanish. Spanish. Bueno, Alexei te pregunta cuáles ves las dificultades desde el punto de vista jurídico para que se hagan negocios entre nuestros países. Eh, ah, tú vas a traducir. Sí, dime. Eh, para mí existe, eh, ahora en Brasil existe una dificultad muy grande porque nosotros hemos sufrido un golpe de Estado. Сейчас для нас бразилии тяжело заниматься бизнесом, так как недавно был госпереворот. Uh, a year ago, uh, we had a government w which wanted um, to develop population, to have a population uh, which take interest in uh, in in, in inter BRICS, intra BRICS um, countries uh, cooperation. We uh, became victims of uh, interaction, uh, interference uh, by the U.S. Uh, in our politics and big, big companies interfering with our affairs and uh, make it difficult the democratic uh, transition and development of our country and the implementation of business project, I mean SMEs project, projects. And we hope that uh, as a result of a uh, new presidential election, we will be able to, to, well, just to be on the right path for the right development. But unfortunately, Because of the coup d'etat, uh, our business elite is pro-American, not pro-Russian or pro-BRICS. That's my answer. Thank you. Thank you for translation. I'd like uh, to say that our festival is dedicated to anti-imperialistic questions, who is more anti-imperialist uh, than a young entrepreneur, somebody who is involved in small entrepreneurship, uh, because a lot of local brands, local ideas and business systems been developed in SEO and BRICS because of um, a powerful big, big pressure of big corporation cannot survive. 
And that is why I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Bell uh, so that to continue this dialogue between the, um, the speakers and audience. And I, I would like to ask you to comment on the development of uh, uh, and challenges of uh, youth entrepreneurship. And uh, from your point of view, can you come up with the best, uh, best um, uh, youth entrepreneurship in uh, uh, South Africa? Thanks, Alexi, for the opportunity. And uh, having faith in us to actually say we can actually make a difference in terms of how we can bring about uh, the different countries together to see how we can make a better future for the current youth. So basically, because I was given the opportunity to look at um, innovation and business uh, interaction between the youth or between the BRICS and SCO. First, maybe I'll just look at some few things that actually BRICS looked at, give the background especially with their latest declaration whereby the Federation of Republic of Brazil, the Russian Federation, the Republic of India, the Republic of China, and the Republic of South Africa, what they actually decided on when they were in Sham. Because uh, they had one thing in particular that was very outstanding when they actually said, under the BRICS theme, our code. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry for, sorry for interruption. Please uh, tell your speech louder. Oh, OK. Please, and at microphone. Thank you. OK, thanks, 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 Alexei. OK, so they had something in particular which was very outstanding, where they say BRICS, stronger partnership for brighter future. That was a very outstanding uh, phenomenon that they looked into to say, if they come up with something to say brighter future and for the leadership, that was a very important thing. But for us, as the youth, because we are the future, I think we need to look at how we can actually bring about the change, taking from what the leadership has actually put for us to look in. So they also reiterated that it is overarching objective of their desire for peace, security, development, cooperation, that through them, together 10 years ago, they decided that, and now, it means 10 years ago, some of us were 10 years younger, so, but they still have the same vision. So it means we are the ones that have to take the vision forward into the future. And, uh, and the, they have since traversed a very long way to actually achieve what they've achieved, like what our Brazilian counterpart has just mentioned, the fact that uh, you have corporations that come into play and try and destabilize the whole process that all these leaders have come about. So it's our prerogative as the youth that we must make sure that we can go back into the falls and try and drive the objective and the desires of our current leaders. So they've showed committed efforts to make sure that all these countries can start trade. And through the trade, and also changing their policies, like for instance, now you have South Africa coming into Russia. The visa probe uh, has been scrapped, which actually has made it a bit easier for people to move around between the two countries. China still has the problem now because they still haven't changed their system. But all other countries, if we move to a point whereby we can actually facilitate as the youth and see how we can actually get to make sure that we create policies or migration policies that will make life easy for business interaction and cooperation between the BRICS countries and all other countries at large that are also here. As part of you are not part of the BRICS, but we are saying we encourage you to see, see the good part of the BRICS arrangement and see how you can actually take some of the good parts and back to your countries and see how you can influence them to join the BRICS setup. Like we have comrades that have mentioned the fact that uh, the countries are far apart and being far apart, but there's a way that we can actually communicate because the globe has become one now. Okay. 
They, they actually, during the, the summit in Shanghai, they draw satisfaction from many fruitful results of their cooperation, including the establishment of the new bank, which actually, when you look at the new bank, is something that we should be working towards to go and see what are the fruits of this new bank. How is it going to develop, uh, develop and benefit all these countries that are involved in it? And also see if other countries, we cannot bring them into the fold so that we can actually counter the effect of the IMF, your World Bank together combined. Because if there's nobody who actually takes action on that, then we'll remain with the status quo and the world order will never change. So let's take the cue from what we have seen also from our Russian counterparts where they've actually almost cleared all their debt with the World Bank. That I think we need to give them a round of applause and see how we can actually get our countries to be removed from such bondages. Because uh, if you look at the new bank, it's going to make a change and the, we must expect a lot of resistance from the imperialists and all the other countries that have always been against the BRICS and its also counterparts, the SCO. And uh, I will also take a cue also at what the SCO has been looking at and what actually when I look at it in conjunction with BRICS, what is it that we can actually get out of it and see how we can take it back also to see how the world can change. Because the world order has to change at some point. And who's the driving force behind that? The leaders have just set the tone. But you as the youth of this world are the ones that actually have to look into how we change the world order and how we actually do that is through innovation and also business connections and networking. Sorry, Mr. Abel. Uh, you said uh, one of most important things, true connection and true networking. Let's, let's ask a few questions to your comrades. Are you right or no? Please. Um, to, to, to give a response, um, and maybe just also unpack some of what the, my comrade there has said. Uh, you need to have an understanding of the South African uh, SMME or small business um, a market or industry. Um, South Africa, as many of you guys might be aware, is broken down according to race. So after apartheid, it's what, 22, 23 years later, but the systems, the economic systems are still in place. That means for a black person, black majority, it's still hard for you to set up a successful business. It's then even harder to leverage any relationship that you might have based on BRICS and SEO and then be able to fly perhaps abroad and have a business uh, uh, discussions and maybe even supply something because your means of production are so low that you cater for an informal market in, in most instances rather than a formal market. So that's the first problem that South African, and I would say a majority of South African um, young entrepreneurs have, is the, the access to finance in order to set up the necessary infrastructure to then be able to play a part and trade abroad. That's the first problem that we have. Um, I will also agree that distance between, for instance, Russia and South Africa is quite far, but nonetheless, you still do have trade. And if you're smart about it, you can maneuver around it's costly, but you can still maneuver around that. Um, the, I, I agree with, 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 with my comrade. The, the difficulty we also have is that you have a lot of good diplomatic formal agreements between Russia and South Africa but they don't filter down to the people who are actually starting up the businesses. So someone in Russia might not know that there's an opportunity for them in South Africa. And South Africans might also not know, and that extends to all the other countries that are involved in this discussion too. So those are the things that if we could, the dissemination of information to say, here is an opportunity, 
how do you qualify and make sure that it benefits the majority of, uh, of, of, of the people residing in the countries that are involved in that discussion? Um, Спасибо. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Abel, I will give you the floor after a while, and now I should like to support. Thank you very much for your presentation. Your, uh, your colleague well, has agreed with you. It means that there is a kind of a unification, and it is very strong in South Africa, and you will be able, we will be able to build up a respective business in South Africa, because two entrepreneurs have the same opinion. However, you raise the question, and it has a quality and quantity in nature. As far as I understood, how can we check quality, whether this business is good or bad? How can we check the market, the opportunity given by the market? How can we see these opportunities, and how can we choose a good partner? At the same time, I see one more issue. How can we reach each other? through the oceans and seas and great distances, how can we form our trade, which has not started yet? We only built highways and ways, uh, highways to move our commodity, our goods, and it is regulated by BRICS countries and SCO countries. However, uh, there is something which can be which can solve the issue of trade and of transportation of goods and money. And this is the internet network. This is the system uh, to support startups in the sphere of internet. In any case, clients, customers, um, they can see each other on the screen of a monitor, they don't have to go to a market, they don't have to go to the Silk Road. And uh, even I mentioned the word Chinese Silk Road, I should like to give the floor to our speaker from China, Xu Yi. He is a general director of IT company. He's a CEO of an IT company. And he will talk about uh, big data, about internet and how Chinese internet occupies, occupies in good sense of this word, occupies the world. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm a, a CEO as a founder of the internet company from China. So uh, forgive me, I just speak English a little well and I will uh, turn to Chinese and uh, someone can help me to translate the Chinese to Russia. And uh, where, where is uh, uh, who can uh, translate our guest? Okay. Ah, we переводчик. Okay. Давайте микрофон. Okay. Um, 大家好，我是来自中国的一名创。Good afternoon, my name is Fi, and I'm a co-founder of a company in China. Ten years ago, when I started at the university, I started my business. In my company, we have more than 60 young employees, and our company is dealing with internet and with big data. We help companies to sell uh, we are selling and we support maintenance uh, of uh, the cars. Uh, they are updating so that they could go, can be, mo be modern. Uh, 
The latest information reform which took place in China was 10 years ago when we well, lived in the computer century. Uh, many enterprises used the so-called systems, uh, computer systems, for a joint industrial management and governance. However, this key, the key problem is that only those uh, that all these enterprises were inside the circle and they lacked customers. Nowadays, China uh, joined the era of a modern internet, and in all spheres, the percentage of the mobile payment is 43%. In the most developed cities, people sometimes they go to outside, outdoors, they don't have any cash with them. And joining the era of mobile internet, a Chinese economy ha well has started its new new era, its new century. It means that the system of inf information exists not only within the enterprise, but it expands towards the client. <laughs> A clients may also take part in the technical process, practically in almost all cities in China, you can, well, you can order your food using internet. And, well, 30 minutes after you place your order, you receive tasty food on your table. Uh, this is the system C to B. As soon as the consumption level increases and uh, the percentage of the use of this equipment increases too, And the self-occupancy will not uh, increase. Enterprises receive more profit. Uh, this is done thanks to those factors. Uh, first of all, when users uh, look and uh, well look on the internet, the goods that they want to order, and they order these goods, we receive a lot of data about these customers. Manufacturers use their business intelligence and they find out what kind of goods are most popular in the respective regions and in different periods of the year. Uh, 
Uh, thus, enterprises may prepare goods in advance and they reduce their losses. <laughs> Secondly, uh, we are promoting intellectual properties and intellectual production in China uh, 2025. And this intellectual property, uh, well, they contribute to the inf to the to advancement of the production lines. And they improve and increase the amount and the efficiency of a personal order and equipment in the production lines. And finally, we organize flexible production. It is well known that in the city Jinzhou in province Gondon, uh, there is a most improved system of providing services and production. It is the place where iPhones are manufactured. They have all the necessary electronic components and lines of production. As soon as you have an idea, uh, all, all kinds of the elements are there. In China, uh, there is the biggest developing market of consumption. In China, young people who were born in the 80s and 90s of the last century now they are the main consumers and they perceive the culture of different countries of the world and uh, consumption is diversified. And that is why we invite young people from BRICS and SCO countries to China. You will be able to start to open your business and realize your business model. For example, in the Olympic Park, I saw many bicycles for, for general use, and this is a business model which started in Beijing, in China. Uh, this idea was suggested by two, uh, well, two new enterprises, Ofo and Mobike. Oh, well, and these ter uh, the, well, these enterprises were set up by two young people two years ago. Uh, these young companies they define the well, they their turnover is four billion dollars.
we notice that China has plenty of similarities with Russia, India, South Africa, and other countries belonging to SCO. And we, well, we are different in culture and mentality. And that is why young people have a lot of space for development and great opportunities to open their own business. I hope that I will have the opportunity to cooperate with you and let us, let us open new Apple together. Спасибо господин Сюй. Thank you, Mr. Sui. And immediately I have a remark. Thank you very much. It's a very interesting presentation. I want to pay attention of our speakers. We are not advertising any company. It's not a presentation of your company. And I wish that speakers could mostly tackle the problems that we have in economic relations of BRICS countries and China as the major player. It is a locomotive, it is a driving force, and we wanted to hear from you what needs to be done within the custom legislation, within the financial joint projects, so that we could cooperate with an advertising company. You have a great company, a very good company, but we don't want to pay our time for the advertising of your companies. Please, it's a wish to all the speakers, please tackle the main issues. All kind of remarks, uh, commentaries, even the most tricky ones and provocative ones, they have their right to exist. But I'm only a moderator. I just give the floor to the speakers. But I wanted to uh, mention one nuance in your speech, Mr. Sui. Uh, I know that China, well, I have we seen, I have we seen on my telephone, and I know that WeChat used a very interesting and a very innovative system, exchange of money, like an electronic purchase, purchase through the telephone, through the smartphone. Young people use it a lot, and even shops are being developed in the telephone. I don't know why, but at the same time, the older generation, not only in China, but also in Russia, they are it is more conservative, and the, the well, when the population, the, the more rich the population is, the more conservatively they perceive innovations. And that is why I should like to hear the commentary from one of our partners and our friend, Mr. Sergei Shashkin, who works for the financial company in Confederation of Switzerland, and he is dealing with finances. And as a follow-up, I have two questions. The first question, uh, is there any developed system related to electronic trade in Switzerland? Secondly, what are the real tools that we can use in BRICS countries in, for the quick, fast exchange of capitals of money uh, for young entrepreneurs? Okay, well, uh, Swiss is uh, a financial, uh, Switzerland, sorry, is a financial center with the high concentration of uh, capital. And um, uh, as an example, I bring, uh, well, such fact that 30% of all cocoa, well, 50% of cocoa of all uh, cocoa, cocoa, world cocoa turnover is in Brazil. So y legal um, uh, deals are made in uh, Switzerland, for example. So, but Switzerland uh, is not uh, a BRICS or a SEO member, but the neutrality approach and uh, a well-developed tax legislation is um, contributed um, uh, in a positive way. 
and uh, that is why uh, extracting companies, uh, for example, have uh, are represented in uh, Switzerland widely. If I start uh, enumerating non-state at state uh, corporations, they all big corporations also uh, present uh, represented in um, uh, Switzerland. Well, I'd like also to say that after China and um, Russia, the e uh, um, uh, money circulation is everywhere now because we now we get used to the fact that uh, even when we take taxi, we can use our mobile ba bank. And uh, here, uh, in these terms, I would say that conservative countries, including Switzerland, are lagging behind. So, as you see, because of this conservative approach uh, in Switzerland, I don't think that uh, Swiss example is the best one. Uh, of course, there are some cases when we are lagging be behind, but anyway, we're also doing, uh, making progress. Uh, getting back to the main point, of course, we should uh, be clear, de de define clearly our uh, uh, agenda. Well, you said that 30% of world cocoa traded through uh, Switzerland, which does not consume it, right? So, but what's the problem? Why a uh, of cocoa is traded, 50, 50, sorry, percent of cocoa is traded in Switzerland, but we all like uh, chocolate. Why, why in, in Switzerland it, it is traded, right? 50% of world cocoa. Well, historically speaking, uh, Switzerland with its neutrality, uh, <coughs> created all uh, conditions, uh, including customs con and, and tax con conditions for um, uh, offshore business. And uh, some 9%, if you would like to understand the, the tax, 9% on uh, the profit. And uh, therefore, Switzerland attracting um, all big companies. <coughs> On the one hand, which uh, we have uh, banks there who are able to to make big transactions. On the other hand, the legislation, the norms and legislations are very effective. Thank you, Sergei. Well, in fact, business, um, uh, the reputation, as they say, is wonderful. Uh, as I say, in, in India, you need to find a through, true partner. I have uh, heard this uh, many times during negotiations uh, since I switched to India now. Well, I would like to give the floor to um, Ms. Um, Ms. Aditi Anat to ask her to ask her to make presentation and to ask the question how to find true partners in India. That is first question. And the second one is that each BRICS country is developing a serious investment program. And in your country, this investment program is called to make made in India. And that's why I want you to talk on these two points. And colleagues, please, we are short of time. We have only 35 minutes left. So be short and sweet, please. And uh, there will be a lot of uh, questions from the audience. So speak uh, short, but not quickly. OK, so that, so that we can understand you. Hi. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you all. I'm Aditi Anand. I work for the Ministry of Commerce um, in New Delhi, India. 
um, the company that I work for, Invest India, uh, is the national investment promotion agency of the country. Um, it was started in 2009, um, primarily um, in the previous government is, is when it started off. Um, but it was um, it was a reactive organization. It was waiting for companies which were in India to reach out to us with queries, um, their their various questions, um, questions on culture, questions on the legal perspective of India. Uh, question on how to start businesses in India and set up a company in India. But now this company has become uh, a proactive um, organization whereby we reach out to companies across countries uh, who are looking to invest in India and want to tap into uh, the market. Um, if I can go on to the next slide, please. India is growing at the rate of 7.2%. Uh, we have about uh, 27, 28 states in India. Um, and if I was to talk about the states in three buckets uh, of, say, nine, uh, each bucket is actually phenomenal. One bucket is growing at the rate of 12.7%. It is the Jharkhands and the Odisas of our country. On the other hand, we have, uh, you know, the two others which are catching up. Um, obviously, one bucket of uh, nine is growing at around seven to eight percent, and the other is growing at a much lower rate, um, which are which are which are the sunshine states of the country and are catching up. Um, if you look at the investments in India in the last three years, we have attracted 175 billion uh, investments across 25 sectors. Um, look at population. We're looking at growing to 1.5 billion people uh, by 2030. We're already at 1.2, and the rate at which we're growing, urbanization, uh, migration into India, we're going to be 1.5 billion people. Looking at voters, that's what's the most passionate, I feel most passionate about this portion. Um, if you look at the voters who voted in the last election, we had about 850 million people voting. But of that, if you note, it's 120 million, which were the youth of the country. It is the youth which is actually taking the development of our country forward. That is the most, most, peculiar part about the development of our nation. Let's go on to the next slide, please. So this growth is happening, and it's happening in a 360-degree perspective, all right? It's, it, it, it talks of financial inclusion. It talks of making in India. It talks of getting startups on board. Uh, it talks of getting each and every person in India an identity card. Nobody in it, I mean, a majority of India did not have an identity. If you went into the villages of India, this guy, you know, was born without an identity and probably died without one as well. Now we're going to, now we have the Aadhaar card, which is like the social security number in the U.S., and I'm sure, I'm not sure what the ID card in uh, Russia is called, but it's a, it's a, it's an eight-digit uh, number which each citizen gets, and you need to connect that number to your bank accounts, uh, to your ration cards, and it, it makes you a legal entity in the country. Let's go on to our next, please. Make in India. Make in India, as um, I told you, was a um, was a campaign which started off in 2015 to attract companies to come to India to tap into this market, which is growing at an exponential rate. Um, it has 25 focus sectors, and I will talk about them in a few minutes. Let's go on to the next, please. Next, please. So these are the sectors, um, and, and you can see the dollar amounts under each of these. Uh, this is a trillion dollar market sitting in India across aviation, across food, across um, textiles, across renewable energy, across infrastructure. It is phenomenal. Let's move on, please. We were talking about issues, you know, that companies face when they go abroad and, and, and work um, in an unknown land. These are the few changes that India has done in the last three years. 
in the last three years to make doing business in India easier. We have changed some, till the last week when I came to Russia, we had made amendments to 7,032 laws in the country in the last three years. And why? This is only to make doing business in India easier, to make it more modern, to make it more re relatable. Because we had laws in India for the last thousand years, and they were obsolete, but they were sitting in our books, and we had to comply by those, right? Um, so we've made changes to those as well. Um, and I'll be happy to talk to each one of you um, after this and, and go into detail if there's any specific question. Um, it's cost, be it the FDI policy, uh, be it the company law, um, be it the eBiz portal, which is basically a portal where you log on and you put in your details and you can have a company in the next three days. Um, we have the bankruptcy code, which has been fixed. It's not going to take you forever until infinity to actually uh, wind up your company. You will have a certain procedure and, and a timeline to actually close it out as well. Uh, we have e-visas now for 162 countries, which is amazing. We started off with only some 70 uh, about three years ago. So uh, we have really ramped that, part, that up. Let's go on to the next. So this is, this is Invest India. I'm not going to talk about it too much because this is not the focus. But we, we work with government and industry because we are a government company. And uh, we facilitate agencies. We do not charge a fee because we are part of the government. And we work with all companies um, across all sectors. Now, this is the most interesting part. Uh, this is the $1 trillion investment available in India. You look at roads. There are 40 kilometers of road which is being laid out in India per day. We need, we need experts from around the world to come to India, work on these pub, uh, private public partnerships, and set up roads. Uh, talk of aviation, we have to set up 250 airports by the next five years in India. Look at ports, look at railways, housing for all. We have four persons moving from the villages into the urban areas of India per minute. Imagine what that means, four persons per minute moving into, in, uh, moving into urban cities. Uh, per minute, and that means that we need a total of 110 million houses by uh, 2025. Uh, we need people who, you know, understand new technology, who know how to build new infrastructure to come to India. Talk of smart cities. We have 107 smart cities which have been approved by the government, and there's a budget of $15 billion which has been set out for uh, setting up these smart cities. And what these smart cities really is, is um, I'm going to go into that for a second. Uh, can we go back, please? Yes, so 107 smart cities in India, uh, 90 of which are already shortlisted, and there's a $15 billion um, budget for that. What this is, is everything in this particular city, which will be a part of a city to start with as phase one, will have to be smart be it mobility, be it electricity, be it waste management. Um, be it the mobility as well. Uh, so it starts from a portion of a city and it will eventually uh, uh, grow to the rest of it. But we have 90 which have already been set up and there's a huge uh, requirement of new technologies uh, to come to India. And renewable energy, that's the very big one. We have a 175 gigawatt plan to achieve by 2022. Solar, wind, biogas, we need this electricity in India uh, to take part in um, our smart cities or to actually just feed the grid. Uh, solar rooftops. We have solar rooftop uh, policies in India now across all states. Um, So 
this was about India and the growth in India, all right? This is where we're at right now and, and why we need new technology in India. Talking about the India-Russia um, investment opportunity, India and Russia are really working together um, across a few sectors. Um, the main few I've put on the slide here being mining, fertilizers, aviations, and modernization. Um, in mining, we are working with a few companies on mineral development, which is identifying where minerals are available in India, considering the Russians have um, great technology for excavation and uh, identification of new minerals. We're collaborating with a lot of uh, companies. Just last month, we had the India-Russia uh, desk, which was uh, inaugurated in Vladivostok. Um, and we are working with a lot of um, equipment suppliers for particularly for aluminum and titanium castings and trivugal castings. Um, on fertilizers, India is working on, India requires potassium, uh, potash, what is, um, and potassium chloride, that's the third one which is required in India. So we're working with a lot of Russians who are coming in and uh, providing good quality um, produce to us. Um, aviation, we're working with a lot of helicopter companies, super jets, turbofan engines, uh, providers. Uh, on modernization end, we're working with, um, uh, with the National Research Center um, in Russia. Um, and on the other side, the, uh, the relatively smaller projects, but a lot of tractor companies companies which are pharmaceuticals um, who, man, who uh, manufacture APIs are coming into India in the pharma cities which are being set up across um, industrial corridors. That's the other big one. We have an industrial, we have the industrial corridors which is being set up in India, which is a rectangular um, uh, channel of travel which will be set up for only for commercial vehicles. And there will be um, uh, setups of homes also around these uh, industrial corridors. Uh, we're working with huge construction and infrastructure companies um, from Russia. So this was a quick um, overview of what Invest India does and how we are collaborating with Russia. Um, I'm happy to talk to anyone who is looking to invest in India or um, understand the market more. Um, thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you. You may know that we have a special guest here. He is an ambassador of this festival, a special guest from India, Mr. Singh. The floor is yours, the floor is yours Mr. Singh. I raised hands earlier without knowing that Aditi was going to touch. I was going to raise some of these points without realizing that Aditi is sitting and she's going to touch upon some of these issues. I think fundamentally, if BRICS has to remain relevant, if BRICS has to remain a strong and a potent alternative for a different world order that my friend said, obviously, uh, it's, it was that's why BRICS was formed and set up as an acronym. And we have to find ways and means within our own system and there are a few anomalies here I like to touch upon. We and China have a trade of about $100 billion. A small country like Israel, India-Israel trades, ma'am, $50 billion. But with Russia, we, our trade is only $10 billion. And I've been saying this for the last 10, 12 years, that number of fora I've had an opportunity to speak is just stuck at 10 billion, nine and a half, 10, 10.8. What is, I think, we need to sit together and identify bottlenecks. Because that's how, as a cohesive BRICS, we can, we know China has a manufacturing strength. Our service sector is very strong. Almost 60% of our GDP comes from service sector. But we also have a very fine manufacturing base. Pharmaceutical, textiles, and automobiles. Well, some of these areas wonderfully well. Why is it that we cannot increase our trade? Why is it stuck at $10 billion? And, Notwithstanding, even within the BRICS, 
I think let's not look at some of those political things. Well, we could have differences of opinion one country to another. We could have differences with China. I mean, academically, we're all uh, talking here. But China can pull the bricks out of all this because South Africa, Brazil, their economy is bad. Inflation, you know, growth rate is, I mean, in the last two years, has been very, very bad. But you guys have, look at the size of your economy. We're only 2.8 trillion. Their economy is nearly six times more. And that's the kind of capacity that you have. Within the BRICS, we can sit together and work out modalities and make so that we become more sustainable. And uh, in the last few years, when in 2004, when the world was really under severe financial crisis, when all the financial institutions crashed all over the world, we were growing then at 9.5%, 9.8%. We have capacity. We have huge domestic economy in India. And now, obviously, we come a long way since 2004, since 2009. And uh, like Aditi said, the number of processes have been streamlined. Laws have become more workable. And all the out outmoded laws have been done away with. And the climate of working in India is beautiful. We are world's largest democracy. We are very strong and independent judiciary. And we have world's largest diversity. We all, 4,300 community and sub communities still manage to live together. We haven't had a civil war in India in the last 70 years. So it's a wonderful place where we can invest. We rely, we must rely on each other's strength and do something. Uh, I think we are a little too watertight within our own capacities. And within BRICS, there is so much that can be done. I mean, it's a small example of $10 billion I'm giving you. And believe me, for the last 10 years, it is $10 billion. I've conveyed this to, I even met the Russian president once and I conveyed it to him. So let's search for solutions. Of course, she's given a very nice presentation, giving where India stands today. But I think let's search for solutions within our own system rather than going outside BRICS and finding solution. That's how we'll become a really strong alternative. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Singh. Yes, this is a very correct formula for the current meeting. And I suggest to go now for a person who is trying to find these solutions, and he finds this solution and implements them in different countries and helps the entrepreneurs of different countries to uh, jointly use these solutions. So we can work only in the club, in the business club of SCO, Shanghai Corp. Uh, oh. And I want to give the floor to Mr. Denis Turin, to the president of this club, director of this club. Uh, dear friends, colleagues, partners, um, first of all, take into consideration the lack of time, a uh, deficit of time. I should like to briefly talk about the possibilities for the business cooperation which we have within SCO and BRICS as well. First of all, I should like to tell you that in SCO we have oh, we have a oh, one of the central organizations, it's a business council. It is located, the headquarters of this business club is located in Moscow, and it consists of several parts. In every country, the major business association forms its national part of this business club. And when one of the entrepreneurs in the countries of SCO requires an entrepreneur or some business help in another country, it is very easy. SCO sends an application to the country uh, where they seek a partner from, and then the country that is looking for a partner, they, want, they will make a selection and they find this partner. Our business club, in fact, uh, does the same using modern information technologies, uniting uh, the data bank of different enterprises of different branches of economy in all the countries which belong to SCO. But this is what lies on the service. Of course, business associations are looking for partners all over the world. In order to identify economic cooperation and interaction, we need uh, to look for new modern methods. And among those tools that we use, 
Uh, for example, I would say that electronic trade is in the first place, and a quick uh, searching for partners using data banks, electronic data banks. On the second place, it is the permanent interaction with business communities, exchange of business missions, negotiations uh, during the international forums, and creation of business clusters in every SCO country. Now we are realizing, um, well, a major project striving to create in every capital of a CSCO country and BRICS country business uh, business centers under the umbrella of BRICS and SCO motor. One way, one business way, we have to use the unique existing, we have to use existing space, or we can create these business sites where we can unite representatives of uh, national uh, diasporas uh, who are dealing, who are doing business in this or that country. For example, in Moscow, where we could invite representatives from India and receive the information about uh, Indian business. Unfortunately, we don't have such a place, such a space in Moscow or in Kazakhstan or in Brazil or in Turkey. And it would be good if countries who just come started to come on the Russian to the Russian market they of course they should have access towards all the information technologies and towards all the proposals but this is what concerns the so-called mature business if we talk about the young business uh, then we are talking about young entrepreneurs about startups and it's a small business and here international trade must have an access to the international markets not only for investment but for selling their goods and commodity in the mar in the markets of other countries in moscow together with the business community business council of cis we have arranged such a space and uh, it is located in the shopping mall, a food city. Every country has some trade space, about 100 square meters. Some countries, they occupy more space. And the national operator assembles representatives of those who manufacture goods in their country, and they organize kind of exhibition. Of course, the producer does not come to this exhibition, but he sends samples of the goods that they are manufacturing, technical data, price, and and conditions of supply. And since um, since they have a flow of uh, customers, we are talking mostly about food products. Uh, but these national producers, they can receive a lot of feedback from a customer of each country about the amount of goods that they may need, about the technical characteristics that are in demand, and we have concluded agreements always uh, with the information and trade space and Shijian in China, and we hope that the Russian cluster of this major exhibition will present its interest, not only to of the regions of Russia, but also of our countries, partners in SEO and Central Asia. And I invite you to take part in this cooperation. Along with this information function, a great importance is given is given the language bar barrier, which prevents us from developing and improving business cooperation. You may know that the greatest turnover in the world is given belongs to USA and Canada because they have one border and the business climate and the language space uh, and it is very easy for them to trade russia and china they also have a dry land a border but there is a language barrier it prevents them to develop trade cooperation as for, as for the transportation uh, a lot of investments is 
paid by the China uh, to the program One Belt, One Road and by Russia. Uh, it, striving to improve the railways. So these issues are more or less under control, but language barriers have not been developed, have not improved, and our business council does something with the company Abi. We've already arranged a kind of a site around the exchange of the translation about the goods and about the goods and we have all kind of language pairs Chinese and all other national languages and for a minimum payment you can receive quality translation services in order to publish and to advertise information about your product and to deliver this information to that language space where where do you think that your uh, goods will be in demand? So I will conclude. You can read the information about our activity on Internet, and I should like to appeal to you, especially to our colleagues from India, from Pakistan, if we have them in our room. Nowadays, we are preparing the national part of the Business Council in India and Pakistan, and so far, Oh, we haven't had any dialogue which of the national associations will become part of our business council, and I suggest cooperation between us, and uh, we should look for partners uh, for our economic projects. Thank you very much for your attention, and again, I ask you to be more active in searching for your partners and using information technologies for economic cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Denis, for your intervention. Uh, dear participants, who lives in the countries in SCO countries? We have eight countries, Russia, India, China, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. I see Mr. Vicenta, are you with us? Yes. And uh, those who raised your hands, also Islamic, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, those who raised hands, please raise your hands again, those who have issues with communication, who is lacking joint space for exchange of information. I'm talking about business communication. So you are lacking this information space. I'm Marat. I'm a young entrepreneur, and I do my PhD. I'm a postgraduate. And I would say that small enterprises in my region, I represent the uh, Republic of Bashkirtistan. And we want to trade with big countries, so the most effective way is internet trade, because um, it is difficult to cover these distances. However, this information space is not known in the regions of Russia. Uh, nobody knows about existence of the Business Council. We lack this information, and I think that within uh, TV that BRICS has, for example, in Russia, we have to disseminate this information to the regions, and with the help of TV, we have to give the opportunity to the small companies to advertise their goods or probably to approve a quota, probably 10% 10, 10 of small companies, uh, they should, uh, they could receive orders in other countries. Marat. Uh, TV advertising is the most expensive advertising, and now it is more simple and less expensive um, to publish your advertising on Internet. Probably when you talk about your company, you're talking about some special goods, specialized, specific goods, and maybe other people don't need the information about your goods, but you have to find your niche where your customer is. First of all, you have to translate your information into other languages, 
especially if you are talking about Chinese market, uh, because, you know, this translation between Chinese and Russia could be ridiculous if it has not been verified by a native speaker. So uh, then, with the help of a Chinese, of a reliable Chinese partner, you have to find potential customers and probably some good and honest intermediaries. So these are the two minimum steps. But of course, you will have to incur some expenditures. Talking about TV advertising, yes, it's very good that we have a channel Bricks, we have SEO channel. Uh, they are not presented in our festival. Of course, it could be a good idea to fix a quota for small and medium business in order to publish and publicize and to show uh, some of the most interesting projects. So I think that we can consider this question as, well, using the practice of our special guest. And uh, I'm very happy that today I met this scientist uh, doctor of Sciences, Dr. Park is a professor of uh, Space Institute in South Korea. So, being singers, you have to be singers and swallow this microphone, but this is a joke. So, I want to give the floor to Dr. Park, and he will tell us how young enterprises develop in South Korea based on the universities and how you develop innovations in the state-of-the-art trends. I'm talking about the cryptocurrency and blockchain. you here, and uh, it's been quite a while, so I'd like to make it short. You know the history of South Korea? We started from nothing after Korean War and after the Japanese occupation. We had nothing, no technology, no nothing, but we were able to make it, you know, up to this point. And you remember the Samsung and many, you know, these multi-national you know, uh, companies, and uh, that was led by the, uh, the vision of the... Uh, the leader. Okay, this is one of the most important thing. And uh, Hyundai and Samsung was led by a very, very, you know, special person. And some Asian country uh, shared a very similar, you know, like China and Korea and Japan or something. You know, when they have a really great leader, they were able to make it. But uh, some Western people are different, you know. Like in America, they are very, you know, peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, spread out something. So one thing I want to make sure is uh, this internet is changing from client server to peer to peer. This is a big change and we have to be prepared, okay? So it's not only my saying, but this is from the Harvard Business Review. You know what is really important? This is not IoT, this is not big data, this is not AI, deep, you know, deep learning, but this is blockchain, okay? This is from 2016 Harvard Business Review. Okay, so, but most of the people in this world is not ready for this and they don't know this is Bitcoin, oh, this is a scam, this is, you know, a tulip or something. No, 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 no. Some JP Morgan, you know, the president, the stupid person, they say something about Bitcoin and then uh, this is not the point. The point is the blockchain and blockchain will change everything. Blockchain is the, is the best invention from human history, okay? So uh, everything will be changed. So, but... I don't have that much of time here, and then uh, so people rely on the internet business, and people in Chinese people know much about the blockchain and the Bitcoin very well, and the Japanese also, and Koreans uh, that, not that much. But anyway, uh, there is a history of our development. But uh, come to think about this, you know, people like Briggs people and and do, and and then we develop our country, but uh, the democracy itself is not that efficient. Okay, in Asian people. Okay. So depending on your country, there can be best policy. There's no perfect solution for every country, okay? And your culture and, and so many things depend on, you know. And then uh, now, currently, Korea tried to de uh, already develop and they want to uh, produce, uh, want to give a chance to for young people to uh, entrepreneurship or something, something, something. But where does that entrepreneurship come, really? It's a creative thinking and, and some kind of destination and some kind of a leadership, okay, all combined together. 
And we also already uh, experienced the inefficiency of democracy, okay? Because, <clears throat> you know, once you develop and then you, you have so many laws and regulations and something, okay? At, at first, we didn't have, like, you know, I, I heard from the India that they just cut down so much you know, rules and regulation. I like it so much, but you cannot do it continuously. So how can you make a sustainable economy? This is a really, really hard question, but you will be facing the same thing, I believe, China, right? And India also. You will do very, very good things, but later on, what's gonna happen, right? Inefficiencies or something, because you have to compete with, uh, with America or European people, okay? They already experienced you know, this kind of things 200, 300 years ago. Okay, they kill the kings. I mean, but in our Asian, you know, country, we cannot even think about it, right? So, what can be the best? I mean, this is a really quite, you know, complex question. And uh, this gentleman, who knows much about the blockchain, will uh, also talk about the blockchain. Thank you. And uh, now let's give the floor to another expert in blockchain. Uh, blockchain as a revolutionary system, the breakthrough system. Erast Galumov uh, is a doctor, PhD in political uh, science. How blockchain will influence us uh, tomorrow? Colleagues, friends, well, this is the second time I give, uh, I take the floor. At the first um, session, we talked about the freedom of press and use in this press, and now we are speaking about uh, business development uh, among youth. We understand that uh, there can be the development for youth business until we have the development of a business, uh, business as such, until we have. Uh, uh, conditions for the business development, I mean, uh, taxes, migration laws, and customs laws. And I thought that we, we will be covering these questions because migration law in Russia is the main impediment for uh, small and medium enterprises, uh, sorry, businesses. And Despite the fact that this the same problem on the part of uh, India and China, we still have this, this problem. A lot of problems uh, for cus in customs clearance, and that's what we have to talk about. The, uh, a possibility to take a bank loan. For, for example, uh, can a Russian national, a young Russian national, take a loan uh, from, uh, for example, from a bank in India or Brazil? Of course not. That's what we have to speak about, about the concentration of energy, of use, use energy, and channel it to the development uh, and creation of new models. As for China, for three years, I am in head of Russian China magazine, Russian Beijing, um, which is published both in Russian and, Engl uh, and Chinese. We do everything to unite our business, I mean Russian and Chinese, but it's difficult. The trade turnover of China and um, uh, US is closing $700 billion, and with Russia, which is a general partner of China, strategic and military partner of China, the trade turnover is some $80 billion. Well, maybe that's correct, because both BRICS and SEO at first, they were initiated. They were initiated as political associations, organizations, and therefore we have to uh, insert in this political organization more economy, more economy, more economic ties among our countries. Because if there is no economy in our relations, <coughs> both BRICS and SEO, in some time, they will be forgotten. They will uh, die, and that is why it's so great uh, when uh, speaking, when we speak that it's, it's it's necessary for all political forces of all countries, uh, SEO and BRICS countries, to do their best. If firstly in information area to do their best to reanimate political reserves that can help to open economic 
landscape and possibilities. In fact, we have today wide-scale, big reserves. For example, uh, young people are here. It's interesting for them, but we are unable to get rid of this problem for now. Therefore, we propose, well, a new economy, uh, the so-called blockchain economy. Well, this uh, subject for um, many countries is not a topic, but a, an object, an object on which many countries are basing their efforts and leading countries in uh, cryptocurrency. Of course, USA, not China. USA now is a, is a leader here. And when they say that uh, America will be uh, will run counter uh, against bitcoins, it's not correct. U.S. is trying to become to dominate on blockchain market, and maybe that is a new economy, the so-called blockchain economy, which is becoming popular in Russia. Maybe it will. Give the give the start to new startups, new projects that will allow to change all relations and ties within BRICS. And here, youth is a major moderating force because in IT technologies today, young people dominate with their understanding, new understanding. Sometimes even many of them without educational level, but they are able to, thanks to blockchain, um, change the uh, situation. I'm not going to tell you about the centralized data uh, base, but uh, today when you go to a very remote place, let's say in India, and if you like to well, sell something there, whatever it is, You, you, you exactly go to a remote place in India where uh, no banks, there are, but only the internet. You can do your business and uh, get your payments in bitcoins, passing all the customs and barriers and borders. Maybe it sounds fantastic, a fantasy now, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it, well, uh, when we were speaking about the internet, who believed that the internet might change the world 10, 15 years ago? We all believed that uh, the only thing that we would have is the facts. But today, can we imagine life without uh, the in internet? So in some years, believe me, in five years, six years, let's say, we all will be perceiving blockchain as a basis of new economic strategy on the global level. For example, China, uh, before some restrictive uh, uh, measures, had two-thirds of all bitcoins in, on, on its te territory. And now we have 70 million uh, uh, bitcoins. In 2012, uh, one uh, bitcoin c uh, cost one dollar. Today, one bitcoin costs one thousand dollars and the second thing is the uh, to attract attract uh, finances try to to uh, uh, for a startup to find money in a bank in any other in another country it's impossible you come you come to uh, to a bank and say okay I want to do something but you won't get money you won't get loan, but a big uh, with the help of uh, ICO initial call for office, uh, you will be able to attract attract millions of dollars, having only one idea. And we have many examples here. Uh, young companies, startups, which attracted a lot of uh, well millions of dollars. I don't know how it happened, but it is happening all over the world within blockchain and ICO. Billions of dollars are being attracted. So therefore, I uh, believe that the topic we are discussing and we are thinking how to how, well use organization, how we can. 
how we how we can change these this this problem with all these customs hurdles and migrational laws well and we can do so only by uh, one way we have to uh, develop new uh, digital technologies new projects tap into new projects and only young people can do so thank you thank you so much now we are uh, approaching well from problems to the to the solutions to them and here of course uh, science is ahead uh, of uh, the movement especially in this technological era uh, when people first having only fantasizing only about something uh, find scientific um, uh, basis for their ideas and I, I would like to hear the opinion of one of our speakers who haven't had chance to uh, uh, to take the floor your um, uh, uh, how do you do think what is the potential in this sphere uh, you a representative of India uh, a country where IT technology is developing widely extensively developing how do you see the uh, development of uh, digital technologies in India and what trends, what prospects uh, you, you, you see in the trade with other countries and in other countries? Thank you. You have the floor. Zaswiche and uh, warm welcome. Namaste from India. I am Rishabh Sethi from BRICS International Forum as an international project manager. So today I will be like focusing on this uh, business, uh, like BRICS an SEO business incubator uh, by our organization BRICS International Forum. So like this uh, BRICS SEO business incubator is a, like a startup initiative by the BRICS International Forum, and uh, creating a favorable environment for the young entrepreneurs with the support of bilateral and multilateral development agencies. So the incubator is serving as a support system for the different segments of business and young entrepreneurs from the BRICS, SEO and friendly countries. <coughs> it's a common platform is to provide opportunities of trade investment and joint common uh, platform to provide the opportunity of trade investment and venture employment research and development. It's a bridge to exchange the information on a business, import, export, joint ventures, technology transfers, and then the con contract manufacturing, tie-ups and other business opportunities in various sectors, as well as the investment promotion in the BRICS, SU, and the other uh, friendly countries. This BRICS uh, SEO business incubator is providing services directly and indirectly to our partner organization, chambers of commerce, business councils, and the business forums. Uh, what's the main aim of uh, this uh, incubator is that uh, it's at the promoting business innovation, private sector development for sustainable economic uh, progress to improve communication, trade performance, and efficiency to slow allow business expansion of the innovators and the startups. And the main objective that we will be focusing on is that to provide the platform for exchange and sharing knowledge, experiences between the partners, uh, experts, policymakers, the funding agencies, and to organize interactions among business communities to create inclusive business model under different government programs to discuss opportunities and challenges for promoting entrepreneurship, innovation, and to provide training on key issues to promote continuous regional and national industrial economic growth, including the increasing employment through general business development or stimulating specific economic objectives such as industrial restructuring, wealth generation, or the utilization of the resources. Foster national and international partnership and networks to promote the knowledge generation and dissemissions, good practices, toolkits, creating skill, exploring new paradigms of growth, support to educational cooperation, including the joint ventures of the universities. What will be the more, uh, mainly focus areas will be on this uh, manufacturing, MSME sector, skill development, entrepreneurship, financial services, infrastructure, logistics and supply chain, health and energy, healthcare, education and research, 
film, media, and communication, science and technology, audio and auto components, metals, minerals, chemicals, IT industries. And the services will be like the organized business to business and business to groups, market research and feasibility studies, products and industry specific report, PR services and lobbying, promotion, conservation, launch event conferences, like uh, comprehensive trade facilities, regulatory affairs, and taxation services. One stop solution for setting up the manufacturing facilities, verification of the companies and credit ratings, the identifications of the joint ventures <coughs> partners. And the division will be of this incubator will be like India Brazil business incubator, India Russia business incubator, India China business incubator, India South Africa business incubator, India SEO business incubator, and the last is the India Eurasia business incubator. The main activities that we will be focusing is to like to organize a workshop, expert consultancies, case studies of pilot projects, monitoring and evaluation work exercises, <coughs> increase the public communications through online collaboration of tools, targeted workshops and other events, and substantial financial cooperation with the key partner or organization to have a rich knowledge resources, assistance, development, and cooperation issues. The published newsletters, the journals, the research reports, Organize training program for managers and policy makers, organize the business and the study tools, award for the best incubators and the entrepreneurs, and to play as a gateway role for the contracts and the inquiry, and apply for the grant of the government or in international institution. So at last, I would like to conclude that as uh, uh, we would like to invite uh, all across the youth who would like to interest startup for new startup as a ease of doing business, we will be supporting them for every way. And uh, everybody knows that India is like a big country which is going at a very much higher rate with the new great technology manufacturing, like with our new focus on a make in India. So, and uh, today is like our main very big day, and I got a chance uh, to be the part of this uh, conference. It's the main festival of India. This is Diwali. So I would like to wish to all of you happy Diwali also, and uh, would like to invite you also to be the part of this festival celebration in the evening at 5.30 outside the media center. So thank you. Thanks a lot. And I have uh, Happy Diwali for all Indian peoples. Yeah. Uh, we celebrate in this uh, holiday with you in our souls. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's possible. Uh, я бы хотел, uh, чтобы... I would like... Uh, I'd like that today's, our to today's meeting, uh, I hope that it uh, has been, this meeting has been a very fruitful event, some point for us to, uh, to understand uh, what problem we have, what prospective uh, solutions can we have. And I hope that our experts uh, in this podium, they uh, received some feedback from the audience and the last and last uh, presentation, well, then I will uh, give the, the microphone for the, uh, to, the in, uh, to the audience. Uh, five uh, five um, members of the audience uh, will uh, give their opinion. So I would like to now give the floor to Evgeny Sidorov, uh, the envoy of our festival who works in one of the most successful uh, corporations uh, which had uh, which has success in the world uh, ross atom i give you the floor oh, thank you uh, dear friends we have talked at great length about the conditions required for the entrepreneurs in order to conduct successful work. But for me, one of the most important conditions is to have infrastructure for carrying the business. And the basis of infrastructure is energy. Currently, it is very important uh, that this energy, it has to be safe and safe for the environment. A great role is played is played by the elaboration of the new sources of energy, which is sun, solar energy, wind energy, atomic energy. 
And I think that the issues of safe and comfortable existence are important for everybody. And I should like to mention that today a memorandum of cooperation has been signed between different organizations who are prepared to spend their efforts and discuss and use in reality the experience of uh, development of the uh, development of environment and use of atomic energy to exchange best practices in the development of energy in the development of environment and consequently I ask those who are interested in this topic to take part and to get involved in this work. And on behalf of my colleagues, I, well, I'm not an employee of any of the state corporation, but I ask you to take part in the cooperation, and I'm prepared from my side to organize ways of communication with public organizations that are present in the atomic uh, industry so that we could find the best ways and practices to solve the issues of the safe energy, a recultivation of our territories, fighting against uh, contamination, all kind of pollution and contamination with the purpose for the to keep up the sustainable development of the United Nations organization. I decided to come back here so that, that our dear volunteers could help me with the feedback. If someone wants to take the floor to add something, uh, the microphone is yours, the floor is yours. I'll give you one minute. Uh, my name is Alexey Vesioli, and I'm a journalist from Latvia, from European Union. And uh, first of all, I wanted to say that uh, actually blockchain technology is really important today. And in my opinion, it can connect uh, young uh, entrepreneurs and young businessmen from BRICS countries and also from European countries. Uh, and also, I don't know, is it time for question or not, but uh, how do you see the role of European Union um, actually in yeah, developing young entrepreneurship on the BRICS field. So if it's, is, if it's possible, uh, it will be very great if you could answer this question. Thank you very much. So the next one, I am Dani Badaliev. I represent Kyrgyzstan and I work in the foundation of the development of young initiatives. And I should like to invite all of you to cooperate with us. The topic of this session, of this panel, is public diplomacy. And together with our state agency in Kyrgyzstan, we have a project. We call it the School of Public Diplomacy. If you are interested in this project, please leave your contact details, and we can prepare a memorandum of a joint cooperation. Is there anyone else uh, who wants to provide some feedback? This is Bengtesh Gaur from India. Uh, I hope that the program uh, the theme of the program has been successfully fulfilled. The India is being now a greater part. It has been showing its greater experience in the various factors. And I hope this BRICS relationship and friendship should be continuing in the future, the same context. And I hope to have a great uh, business uh, transactions and relationship and technology transactions so that uh, the technology furthers uh, the peace and the uh, for a better lifestyle to be conducted, uh, we hope uh, to be uh, this relationship should be in the same manner and to increase in the highest extent to uh, for the protection of peace and uh, human relations. Uh, thank you, and happy Diwali for all. Thank you. No. Dear colleagues, uh, you may know that we've talked a, gr a great length about problems, about issues, and Alexei just started our session with the question, uh, talk, say about the problems, about the issues. I think that all issues, all the problems are in our brains, in our heads, 
And it doesn't matter whether we unite in this space, internet space, or in the reality uh, space. It does not matter which tool we will select for our cooperation, for unification of our interpretarial cooperation, whether it is a student's incubator or a business club. With us, it will not, it will not work. It will not operate. And festival gives us an excellent opportunity to talk about our business projects to all those colleagues who are interested in them. And when we come back home, don't forget that these interpretarial uh, ties are very effective. They are very important. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your feedback. And I will give the floor to our Bulgarian colleagues and to our Indian colleagues, and then we will conclude. I am Vadim Khoshpunov from Bulgaria. I represent a youth organization which, um, uh, which is dealing with exchange of the young entrepreneurs with European countries. And very often, we are, we are transparent, we are open for cooperation with China, India, and other countries who take part in this forum. It is very important for us to exchange contact details with you, and thank you very much. We need to know that you need to know that Bulgarian young people are, well, they are very active in entrepreneurship, and uh, the first computer was manufactured and was <laughs> discovered, was invented by B Bulgarian John Mentarasov. So my colleague by, from India. I'm Kiran, I'm from India. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a founder of a company uh, back in Bangalore, uh, the IT capital of India and the IT capital of the world. I uh, run a, a technological-based, web-based mobile application company, I'm, and I'm also into marketing. I was, uh, I'm was i very uh, grateful to Mr. Rishab Sethi, who uh, put up uh, opportunities from India, uh, which could be uh, showcased to everybody, uh, for coming into India to uh, uh, look for more option and opportunity to trade uh, and uh, uh, maintain the relationship. I was looking for the same from China and also from South Africa. So uh, as a participant here, uh, I would like to know uh, what are the options we have uh, from the BRICS countries, that how we can contact them and uh, how we can take this forward. Because I'm sure everybody sitting here are looking for opportunities, including me. So I am looking at uh, one point of contact from each of them, uh, how we can connect and take this forward. Because I have a lot of options. I run three companies in Bangalore uh, uh, on a $2 million company uh, per year on the transaction. I wouldn't mind uh, investing on uh, uh, something more, uh, which could be on a trade alliance, wherein I can import something. I'm really interested in doing it, but for that, I need Connect. Uh, so I would like to have more something with China or South Africa. Uh, that will be great. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a last, last statement by Denis Turin. Thank you very much. Very briefly, there was a question about European Union, and the Bulgarian representative tackled the same um, issue. How European countries, countries of the European Union, can cooperate with BRICS and SCO countries? I should like to give you an example of economic cooperation. Uh, a great portion, uh, a great portion of Chinese, uh, an experience of China. They have a lot of experience of transportation and, uh, and sending the containers uh, in the program, according to the program One Belt, One Road. And it's a good, uh, it's a very good question. Latvia is a transit country, and they have to think about the, their opportunities as well as Bulgaria. Thank you. Uh, in my final statement, I should like to ask all of you to the development of a major international project. Uh, 
business in youth business incubators, which is developed and promoted by the Russian Youth Union starting from 2016. We are realizing two formats, two projects. It is the Russian Chinese business students incubator where young boys and girls from China and Russia can unite and solve interpretarial uh, tasks. We have students from Omsk who take part in this business incubator. You may talk to them. And next year, uh, then we have business in youth incubator in the space of SCO countries. Next year, we are prepared to invite all of you uh, to take part in uh, the youth business incubator BRICS countries. And we are going to launch uh, 20 Russian Chinese incubators for students, and we will welcome and develop new formats in the creation of incubators, in the development of young initiatives in, their, in the business environment. That is why I suggest to conclude our session and to pass to the most uh, to the best part of our session to present the awards, and then we will close. We will announce uh, that our third international forum for BRICS and SCO countries will be closed. So I ask now the volunteers to bring, to help me, to bring diplomas on stage and help me during the award ceremony. We should like to say something. We will present letters of gratitude to all those participants who took part in the public diplomacy sector and to other sectors due to the fact that other the organizers of the festival could not bring us all the awards, but uh, the information space. We will well. We'll, we will present. Eras Galumov with a letter of gratitude, and let's give him a big hand of applause. The certificate will be given to Sershat Sephi. The certificate is given to Xu Yi. Uh, the next recipient of this uh, certificate is Radio Khan Abel Masoji. The next recipient is to our uh, expert and our great friend, Mr. Denise Turin. Certificate is given to our partners of India, representatives of government of the government Aditi Anand. And also And also the certificate for participation in our section it will be given to our partner from Germany, from the International Schiller Institute, Stefan Ossenkop. Mm. 
Uh, dear uh, participants, now we will sum up the results of our forum. Let's give a hand of applause to our moderator, director of the, uh, well, of the, one of the directors of the Russian Youth Union, Mr. Alexei Yezhov. Now you, you have woken up after this applause. Thank you very much for your job, which was very useful for us. Summing up what we have discussed here with you, and we've discussed questions of cooperation, problematic areas uh, in the space of BRICS countries and SEO countries. We have to think about uh, the fact that we don't have to rely on the governments. We don't have to rely on the leaders of your organizations. You have to, you have to take everything in your hands. You have to control everything, what you want to do on the international arena. Russian Youth Union has not thought a few years ago that every two months we will organize major programs with our partners from BRICS and SCO countries, but the support uh, brought us to our success, and we were able to gather our partners from all countries' partners. And so with spending our efforts, uh, we managed to achieve great results. Uh, Alexei was a bit humble and modest, and he has not mentioned the project about business incubators that we are developing. Uh, so far, we have eight Russian-Chinese business incubators. We have major transactions between entrepreneurs of these two countries and Russian and Chinese, uh, Russia and China invest in each other economy. Two weeks ago, we've completed the first uh, business incubator. It was opened in Moscow. And also, I have to mention high results of young entrepreneurs who lived for one month in Moscow, and they were dealing with joint business projects. Uh, next year, it's good news for us, for our partners from BRICS countries. We will have the first meeting. Uh, we will have a meeting. We have taken the decision during our first meeting, and we decided to launch a business incubator in the Moscow region. So I invite all those who want to develop entrepreneurial projects, please come to us. We will accept a lot of young people. Uh, the most important thing is your wish. We do have many problems in the political, economic, humanitarian spheres. But despite these challenges, we actively develop our cooperation, and we can reflect it in our realistic projects and programs. Uh, so with all my heart, I invite you to take part in our cooperation. Russian um, Youth um, Union has a data bank about commercial structures, about authorities of many countries, about individual entrepreneurs, and you may apply to us and ask us to provide data about these countries. And so finally, I want to say that um, for the time being, I think you've had very, it was a very interesting day today because you could communicate with a great number of partners representing BRICS and SCO countries. And next year, when we will organize the fourth forum for our countries, I don't know the country, the hosting country, but we will find out this information on our website. But I may tell you that next year, we will have a second seminar of young entrepreneurs, and it will be held in Ulyanovsk, in the territory of Russian Federation, and the second Forum for Young Entrepreneurs will be held in Khabarovsk and Forest. Also, we spend all our efforts in order to find financing, political support in order to organize major projects, and we will, we want to gather as many young uh, people as possible so that you could have the possibility to extend your activity and to strengthen your positions in the organizations that you work for in your countries. I wish you every success 
Uh, I wish you to take part in this festival. Our team is, will be present here in Sochi until the 22nd of October, and you will have the opportunity to do with us. Thank you very much. 